Greetings, my name is Tony Pickens, and this video serves as a verbal presentation covering the logistical flow of a college board meeting, along with my reflections and observations. I will be referring to the course references and teachings of my ED8500 Governance and Administration course in partial fulfillment of National American University's Community College Leadership Doctoral Program. I attended the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees at Cuyahoga Community College on Thursday, March 21st, 2019. Tri-C is a multi-campus institution and the board meetings rotate locations. Last month's meeting was held in the Mandel Theater lobby at the Eastern Campus. The location was a good choice as the setup provided an open and energetic atmosphere. The Mandel lobby is a spacious area with floor to ceiling windows providing natural light. And from my perspective, this was the first thing that I noticed in that it provided a welcoming atmosphere. The physical space should be accommodating to attendees as this component can have an impact on the tone of the meeting. For example, in review of case study one, the single agenda trustee, I can recall how board meetings became increasingly crowded with concerned Mida Rock residents. The limited space combined with opposing views seemed to add to the tension between the board members and attendees. Furthermore, the International Journal of Leadership Studies share that having a good atmosphere at board meetings promotes cohesiveness. As referred to by Hughes, Minichilli, and Skonig in a 2005 writing. The space at last month's meeting comfortably com uh, accommodated 80 to 100 attendees in an open atmosphere. Speaking of atmosphere, upon entering the meeting, I immediately noticed that it was buzzing with faculty, staff, and administrators. There did not seem to be any community members present, but there was one student present by the name of Chris Cullens. Chris serves as board student scholar this year. This position is filled annually by a full-time student selected by the Joint Student Council. The board student scholar is not considered a trustee, of course, has no voting rights, and does not participate in any decision-making or executive sessions. He or she is present to act as a liaison between the board member and the students and to serve as the voice of the student body. Now, back to the atmosphere. I did notice that the board members really only interacted with each other, the college president, and a few other well-known leaders within the institution. To me, there seemed to be an invisible wall between them and the general body of attendees. I was eager to meet some of the board members before the meeting, but the sentiment didn't seem to exist on the other end. But that's just from my perspective. I could be wrong. Fortunately, Tri-C's president, Dr. Alex Johnson displayed a much different disposition. He seemed to intentionally mingle with attendees and he took the time to personally greet and shake hands with myself and another cohort member of the doctoral program that I was sitting next to. A roll call conducted by executive administrative associate to the president, Barbara Bell, officially began the meeting. The Tri-C District Board of Trustees consists of nine members, eight of whom were present that day. Andrew Randall, the chair, Reverend Corey Jenkins, vice chair, Ann Frangos, J. David Heller, Jerry Kelsheimer, Phoebe Lee, Gerilyn Presti, Victor Ruiz, and President Dr. Alex Johnson, 
who also acts as the board secretary, each verbally confirm their attendance during the roll call as conducted by Ms. Bell. Trustee Helen Forbes Fields was not present that day. To provide specifics on board composition, three of the nine trustees are appointed by the governor. The remaining six are appointed by the Cuyahoga County Executive. Trustees serve a five-year term or the remainder of a vacated term if that's the case with that particular position. The board chair, Andrew Randall, led the approval of the minutes, which was item number two on the agenda after the roll call. Speaking of the agenda, it was very structured. Besides items one and two, which were already mentioned, it included executive officer reports covering information shared by the president and the board treasurer. Also on the trustee agenda were committee reports outlining community affairs and workforce, access, learning, and success, and finally, a detailed management committee report with 17 specific items in which the chair conducted a verbal roll call vote for every item. There was no use of a consent agenda. In my opinion, the firm structure did not put a damper on the meeting style at all. The chair conducted the meeting under a consistent flow with no awkward, silent, or uncertain moments. I guess that's the benefit of following the agenda to the letter. Yet the meeting did not feel calculated or rushed. As a matter of fact, the president and trustees who were seated at a table across the front of the room facing the meeting attendees kept a lighthearted disposition throughout the still formal meeting. At one point, the president's laptop unexpectedly interrupted the meeting with music accompanied by an announcement of the latest sports updates and scores. I guess he forgot to mute his laptop. And to make it even more audible, each board member had a microphone carefully placed next to the nameplates. Not missing a beat, the board members chimed in with their own comments regarding the sports scores while meeting attendees joined in the laughter. From my perspective, highly structured meetings prefer, provide a firm foundation where moments like that won't throw everything off. The only missing component as suggested in the text Handbook on CEO Board Relations and Responsibilities was a 10D contribution. Dr. George Boggs suggests that the board set its side time on the meeting agenda for public comment. This can be managed by a requirement to submit written requests to the CEO ahead of time or to place time limits on individual presentations being careful to manage but not restrict public comment. Overall, I was grateful to be in attendance at Tri-C's March board meeting. My favorite portion was the campus president's report on the great work that the Eastern Campus is doing. I even learned about some enriching community engagement initiatives that are taking place right in my own neighborhood in the district where my son attends school. All in all, attending the board meeting was an enlightening experience, and I definitely look forward to the next meeting. Thank you.